Hi everyone, welcome to CIO Leadership Live and welcome to this very special episode of Women in Tech in honor of International Women's Day. I am Kirat Tatar, Content Strategist at Foundry and I will be your host for this episode. Our guests today are Kopal Raj, VP IT and India CIO of Vaptic and Namrita Mahindro, CDO of Aditya Birla Chemicals. Ladies, welcome to this very special episode of CI Leadership Live Women in Tech. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy International Women's Day. I'm so glad that you've joined me and on the date itself, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's do introductions first. Kopal, could you tell us a little bit about your role in Vaptec? Thanks, Kira, and uh, a very happy International Women's Day to all of our listeners as well. Um, so Vaptec is basically legacy GE transportation where we build a lot of locomotives and metro coach components. So there's a lot of digitization that is required for the, um, you know, all the processes that are there. There's data that is there on the locomotives, on the railway sidings, etc. So there's a lot of infrastructure work that is happening, applications and cyber and data. And I'm responsible for that for India. And overall, as a GCC for uh, Biotech Technology Center, that's my responsibility at this time, Kira. Thank you so much. Uh, Namrita, could you tell us a little bit about your role at Aditya Birla Chemicals? So, thanks, Kira, and would like to wish both of you, uh, first of all, a very happy Women's Day and extend that to everybody who is in the audience today. Um, I lead digital transformation uh, for the Aditya Birla chemical sector. This is a sector which comprises of about five different businesses. So we've got commodity chemicals, we've got specialty chemicals, food grade chemicals, but we also have insulators and uh, viscose filament yarn, which are part of this sector. Uh, we have a footprint across uh, five different geographies, 20 plus plants. And my role as the CDIO is predominantly to look at how can we um, enable each of these businesses, which are different stages in terms of their digital evolution, to become a future ready using technology? So it's a business transformation, but really enabled by technology. There's a lot of work that we do in the industry 4.0 space, industry 5.0 space. There's a lot of focus that we have on manufacturing and supply chain, particularly in that space. Um, a lot of work that we do with uh, data. Uh, we have tons and tons of data as with any manufacturing organization. We do a lot of work with AI analytics, uh, with a lot of the new emerging technologies. Also, uh, we are beginning to experiment. So that's uh, that's predominantly my role. Thank you so much. Um, I am very intrigued uh, by your roles and responsibilities and also by, uh, you know, you being pioneering women in the technology domain. And I hope that I have a lot of questions for you and I hope that we'll be able to really get into this conversation through them. Kopal, my first question is for you. Um, as a woman in a leadership role in Vaptec, what skills and more importantly, what behavioral traits do you feel that women should embody or hone in order to be indispensable in their industry? Uh, so the key word here is indispensable, definitely, right, wherein you have to understand uh, the business as well and understand the customer. And, you know, uh, I would say that it's not only after becoming a leader, but as a professional in the organization to be able to create an impact, you need to understand what does the organization do? Why does the organization exist? What kind of customers do they work with? And, you know, be able to understand those nuances so that then when you are able to, when whenever you are asked about bringing in any ideas, suggestions, one can do that. Otherwise, your world is a limited worldview and you're not able to really contribute to the growth, the success and thinking beyond just the task that you need to do. So definitely understanding the business of the organization, even though I have, I mean, I've been a technology professional uh, through all my career, but I spend time understanding the business in all the all hands and, uh, you know, as one grows up as well. So A, understanding the business, understanding the customer. In terms of, uh, you know, the, the industry that I am in, it, understanding the technology, 
being good at your craft uh, you will need to network with people to understand that within the you know as a if you're if you're a leader of a, one team understand what the other team also does the collaboration and network helps one to grow in the organization there is no doubt to that because you know you one cannot have all the answers but if you want to drive success you have to figure out different ways to do that so again navigating the environment to do that and then personally as a behavioral trait you know understanding what are those things that you can get done quickly because you know you kind of already know them or you have the strength to do them so this and and figuring out how much time you need to spend on something else which helps in your prioritization which is really key i think is a key skill in in being able to manage your role with uh, you know uh, which one has can be dropped today which one needs to be progressed on another time uh, you know another time slot so i would say prioritization time management networking collaboration um learning about the company learning about the customers the technology outside you know in another industry as well like if i'm in the manufacturing industry what does the fmcg industry do uh in a similar space to be able to bring those thoughts onto the table you know some ideas may click some ideas may not but bringing those elements allows one and pushes your teams to think beyond their uh, limited scope that they have you off so these are some of the things which i think are key and critical to be uh, progressing towards a leadership role and when you are in a leadership role you have to continue to demonstrate that that's that's very true kopal so many great points that you mentioned there time management prioritization having a good handle on the skills you know and the skills you don't uh namrita sort of a build up on that given your extensive experience and your leadership role in the tech role in the tech sector what advice would you offer to young women who aspire to have thriving careers in technology given that it is still somewhat of a male dominated space so you know let me start with a little anecdote uh, last night i was at a reunion and a lot of my um, friends and peers were uh, you know i have young children have young daughters also and because it was the pre eve to women's day so we got talking about the subject and i think the consensus was that there is no better time than now and there is no better person than women if you are a woman of substance to be playing in the technology space and i think uh what defines that particularly is the fact that the century of uh now and the you know the next couple of decades is going to be a century which is going to be governed by the currency of capabilities and competencies and that means that there is huge opportunity which is going to open up like never before uh so i think the point is you know focus on yourself focus on deep uh, specialization uh look at you know um not just the technology angle but focus on building your capabilities in the domain uh like uh you know kopal had said look at building your capabilities in data and understanding business holistically and i think the second thing for me is work on building your personal brand and i think as we continue to you know live and work in this gig economy in this knowledge economy that is going to be extremely important so stand out for what you bring to the table which is different uh you know and and that could go a long way in uh you know pursuing your career in technology and uh making sure that you can scale the heights that you are aspiring for yes you're right that's very well put and truly the time is now because i don't think as many myths about women in leadership women in stem have been shattered as they are in, in the current times and uh, it it is our responsibility in the time today uh to pave the way for younger for the younger generation the ones who you know probably spoke to yesterday and all because they are excited they want to know what's in store so they want to know whatever is possible not about you know the things that hold you back that's it's true so you know despite all the changes that have been taking place we still have uh, some statistics that show that we have a long way to go uh for instance there was one statistic that actually i came across which says that only 32% of leadership positions are held by women globally so that's like roughly one third maybe even a touch less than that 
So, Kopal, I'd like to ask you, what according to you is one way that women can rise to leadership and decision-making roles in an organization? And what can the organizations do to support that and create an environment where that ascent is made easier? Yeah, so, um, you know, I totally concur with what Namrita was saying that today's time and age, I think my, uh, you know, is the right time for, and you know, it's built up over years uh, in terms Absolutely. of coming to this point, wherein organizations are encouraging a lot of diversity and they understand clearly the value of diversity. You know, we've kind of crossed that hurdle, right? So it's now for the women to kind of raise their hand and say that they can make this happen, right? Um, and and of course, I mean, I, I I cannot speak for all the organizations, but the sense that diversity makes a difference is there with all the HR leaders, with all the senior leaders of the organization, right? So you do have standard metrics, I think, typically everywhere of entry and exit, uh, you know, how many, you know, where the diversity percentages is. Yeah. Uh, I think in terms of promotions, uh, we could get better in terms of tracking that. You know, how many people internally have applied in, uh, for a certain role, right? And if somebody has not, uh, take some uh, time to do that. And I, I do check that piece and I do believe I, I kind of go back and chase somebody. Hey, why haven't you applied for this promotion or, you know, um, so and, and, and as expected, most often answer is, I haven't done that piece of work. I don't know that very well. You know, obviously there's a job description which has a lot of uh, criteria that kind of mentioned out there and they are not, they feel they're not matching up to that. So not raising their hand internally for that uh, job promotion, right? So you uh, feel there's a little self-doubt at that place that they absolutely. won't be able to. Yeah. That, that continues to be, as I would say, an internal challenge and, you know, something which it's true. women yeah. need to kind of get over and say, um, that nobody, in fact, none of the men folk are ready for that job as well when they're raising their hat, right? And we, but have, they're doing it, it. yeah, but they're doing it because they, yeah. I mean, nobody is ready for a job. If you were ready for that particular job, you would probably you would have had it already, right? Yeah, you would have yeah. Had it. and you would be ready for the next senior role, right? Yeah, yeah you know, we need you to be on that role because there is an element of a growth potential that somebody sees, right? So. When you start interviewing uh, in terms of promotions for the growth potential of somebody versus, you know, all the criteria that I, I is being matched or not with a certain amount of experience, I think we will be able to bring in more women. I think organizations need to be able to kind of uh, uh, make the environment understanding the behavioral dynamics of women. I think most organizations now understand the imposter syndrome that we've been talking in about, right? Yes. So when you know that characterization is, is what is there with women, what can you do to make that more comfortable for women to apply, right? And that is where I'm saying if we kind of follow up and ensure if there is a promotion that's happening, you definitely have diversity candidates, even if they are not 100% um, kind of qualified for it. But who would be your, um, uh, you know, in terms of succession planning, I, even today we do have as leaders to give um, names and a diversity name, right? So all of us have a name out there, but when we are uh, having those promotion interviews, have we made sure that that candidate applied and came in for that conversation? I have found that not happening. And when I've gone and spoken to the lady, it's always been around, I don't think I'm ready. So mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, uh, definitely you will not know um, all, all the dynamics. Even if you get the role, mm -hmm. you'll have yeah. to work hard to understand that space quickly. Right. Yeah. And, and if you if you do, do get that position to be able to uh, kind of uh, influence others with your technical expertise and influence, you would need to do that. So I think with the behavioral traits of women, the, which we completely understand uh, today, how they behave in in the environment to kind of proceed ahead. We need to do things a little differently and kind of chasing them down and telling them, you know, kind yeah. of come for the interviews. Right. And uh, the other aspect would, of course, be uh, in the in the you know uh, the women that we lose 
in um, the whole uh, child uh, child bearing motherhood uh, yes place, right yeah. uh, i think uh, for that aspect uh, a lot of organizations are uh, you know giving a paternity leave right but of course the paternity leave today is 7 days 10 days versus for a woman of course it's 3 months or 6 6, six months, months right? because yeah. of, um 6 months so i mean i think the owner you know uh, uh, some signs over there where the paternity leave also could be more because the you know those are signals that the man also plays that role yes um, sometimes i do always think it's kind of a given that when um, you know a couple has 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 a child the woman is stay the woman is staying back and kind of taking care right because the nurturing aspect certainly is required and yeah. and that, you know there's no question to that that the woman has to play a bigger role there and we we kind of mentally be ready for it but if there is a paternity uh, side whether in either man also has is expected True. to play that role yeah. there's a lot of cultural psyche that would change as well right so if women Very have to step point. back when yeah. there is a maternal aspect the men also should be stepping back when there is a paternal aspect to it right and then i mean see the idea is you you've seen that i think uh, anand mahindra is a nice image wherein when you are on a racing track you have so many obstacles in front of you for women versus the same for a man has no obstacles right obstacles yeah so similar obstacles should be applied i think the men folk would also realize and it's not about it's not about um, i think it's about the cultural psyche changing that the partnership begins at home right and then yes. and then the women would also be confident to take up bigger roles because the home front is also taken care of so i think that plus the fact that on in 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 the um, you know behavioral traits you kind of change your policies and approaches accordingly so many great points made uh, kapal there and i could see namrata just not of nodding along to you know everything that you mentioned the self doubt the imposter syndrome the as the social scientist term it the motherhood penalty which is when a lot of women drop out and hence don't ascend to leadership positions uh namrata i actually have the same question for you because i would like to hear your perspective what would you like to contribute to kapal's answer and what are some of uh, you know your own uh, points on this i think uh, you know kapal has done a fabulous job in talking about a very important point that we shouldn't look at selling ourselves short uh, you know she started with that she said mm-hmm. we don't have the time we don't have the skills can i take on this role i think that bit is so true even today and i think it's so important to not sell ourselves short over there uh, and that is again our internal work that we need to do i think um, i don't want to repeat all of the great points that kopala has you know already mentioned and i concur as you rightly said with all of them but i think also as women we need to start getting comfortable uh by making ourselves uncomfortable and what i mean by that is in all of these situations what is the kind of preparation that we need to do so i think that extra preparation that we need to do to be able to you know make sure that we are confident about ourselves because it's that inner uh, reengineering that we need to do to be comfortable and confident for you know the very many different scenarios that couple called out for the second thing is you know taking a slightly different you know perspective in the workplace also the ability to you know have a very very constructive dialogue to challenge people very constructively you know women are even now many a times seen as these emotional empathetic you know uh species and True. i think it's extremely important for us to you know stop playing that card alone but can we actually um uh, you know state what we believe in and then back that up with data so that what you are hearing you know when you are presenting what others are hearing when you are presenting is potentially you know um something which is backed by data something which is backed by facts so that it comes across far more convincingly rather than saying i think i feel you know those are the kind of things which then start making men feel uncomfortable so you know we keep talking about men understanding women's psyche but i think women also need to understand men's psyche so they are often times more left brain so can we play to that left brain the other thing is as i said men and women have different ways to approach the same thing also there are times when we can play to the strengths that we have as a woman and how do we build that up as a competitive advantage yeah. so conflict resolution typically comes very very naturally to us 
just as one skill you know yes far more naturally then you know it comes to men can we build up on that arsenal of skills that we have mm-hmm. so that you know we can go out there and create differentiation which is a uh, value creating for the organization and when i'm talking about value creating you know it comes back to creating business impact so can we find out opportunities like opal said you know can, where can we raise our hand where can we educate ourselves on the facts identify the gaps and where you know people are saying we won't want to do this because this is different this is risky assess that situation and own those opportunities i think there are many such opportunities which exist uh and sometimes we feel we we can do them but you know uh we don't uh so take take those opportunities because even intuitively instinctively women you know have a knack for some of these things a little better than the other gender uh and and again you know don't shy off of initiating a conversation and i'm here talking about you know even when women are looking at moving up the you know the ladder Uh, what skills are you bringing to the table if you can lead that conversation and say this is the contribution i can make not just for uh you know what is relevant for business today but even for tomorrow uh i think that can be a game changing conversation uh so to my mind from uh you know an uh, from a woman's perspective there is a lot that can be done in terms of uh you know uh, projecting herself uh being confident about herself and uh you know rising up for who she knows she is who she believes in she is and of course the tribe then supporting her out there uh you know when she makes that endeavor to stand up and stand out thank you so much uh, for that answer namrita uh, you certainly added a lot of lot of relevant points uh especially about being able to meet the people who are existing in the organization at their level because while there are some innate skills about women like empathy and you know maybe more emotional intelligence maybe even today there isn't a lot of recognition of how much value that brings so it is inherently looked at as a weakness and until that changes maybe you speak the language of the ones who are already you know uh, in power uh, given that both of you have had such a vast experience and you've had your own trials and tribulations are uh, rising up i want to know a little bit about the leadership principles that have served you well uh i'll start with kopal maybe three leadership principles or one main leadership principle that you would like to tell your fellow women fellow women leaders women peers women who are rising up as to what served you well yeah so i think um, you know despite it so i mean i i have two boys as well and i've had uh, you know my husband was in the army so most of the time i was a single single parent with um you know him being in the uh, other border locations where i couldn't go and i was clear that i the so first thing that i was clear was you know i'm not going to stop working right so that was a decision that i made to myself a commitment to i made that i made to myself and now that wasn't obviously easy i took help from my mother in law my in laws were my anchor right and so they were at home for me while i kind of spent on the house support and things like that even though at that time i it wasn't affordable completely for me that's something that i tell all the ladies doesn't matter you know when you have kids you need to spend more that's not the time to save right it's if your years to save will come get make sure you have the right support so that if you are you know you want to work you kind of get through those times as well and and there were times when i was just floating i was not doing a great project or something of that sort because of multiple reasons but it was okay i was working and i had made that commitment i'm not going to stop doing that right because i i kind of wanted to be able to create the impact outside home as well now um through that uh, journey as well of course uh, you know deciding what is most important like i said the prioritization at that time was whatever role i had so i had you know let's say as a head of it of a smaller organization but delivering never ever uh, missing and on any commitments that i have made right so that there is a trust and credibility that i i have built on my leadership journey and so that uh, you know uh, people know that if i have committed to doing something i will get it done or i will step up to asking for help if there is something which is not going uh, the right way right so if i have stood up to say something that will get done making sure that that happens so that is an execution excellence that i have always maintained 
understanding again, like I said, on the why something is important so that I can bring my team along uh, that uh, whole journey as well, rather than saying, you know, hey, why are we doing this small bit or why do we even need to do something like this, right? Making sure they understand where the organization is going, what are the beliefs of the organization. So getting the team along is extremely important. And that that is where I feel I've been able to achieve that, making sure they are motivated, right? Because to, to the larger thing that they contribute, so that my, even today, the person who manages my network, say, or on a plant in Hosur or in Patna, you know, is impacting the Vande Bharat train that is running actually yes. on the railway track, right? So I think that is where they feel a sense of pride in the work that they do. Uh, so I think these kind of things basically help in being a, a, a leader. And like I said, the growth in whatever space. So if there is an infra person, an application, cyber, data, there's so much that is happening today. Uh, encouraging them to learn and come back and allowing them to speak and allowing them to contribute, right? So that then they kind of stick around and feel engaged. So I, that is where my attritions have always been lower because I think that sense of pride in the work that they do yes. is very, very high, right? Um, and uh, and then, of course, uh, sitting at the table and being able to contribute towards what's important for that leader. That I, I am like, you know, there's the managing director, there's my mm-hmm. local CIO. What's important to them? What's kind of bothering them today? What's the most key important uh, aspect that, the you know, we need to work on and, and kind of trying to contribute towards that. So, again, making yourself uh, meaningful in, in, in that way is what I would say. Yes, right. Those are those are some very, very relevant points because especially the thing that you mentioned about when a person has a sense of purpose, they are less likely to leave that job or leave that role because whatever they're doing is fulfilling them on more than just a professional level. Uh, Namrita, how about you? What are some of the leadership principles that, you know, worked for you in your long experience and your journey so um you know uh you know i think one of the things that worked for me uh was the fact that i started off as an entrepreneur very early on in my journey before i joined the corporate world and i think when you become an entrepreneur one of the things that defines you is that you're no longer working in a silo you own everything you own the impact that you're going to create you own you know, the uh, the projects uh, that are going to come in, that are going to, you know, uh, not just uh, make sure that you earn a salary, but your team earns a salary. And that's a huge responsibility. So when you can come with that mindset of ownership, of creating impact very early on in your career, I think that goes to define you, uh, you know, significantly in the way you look at things. Uh, the second thing uh, from a leadership principle perspective is uh, I've always firmly believed that, you know, you need to have a vision because in our corporate lives, we can get extremely, you know, bogged down by the day to day operations. And it's very easy to lose sight of, you know, what is uh, the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so therefore, you know, taking that time out to reflect, to introspect, to go back and say, do I still have a vision that is inspiring? That is, you know, something that I want to work towards, that my team wants to work towards, which is going to deliver that business impact that that we are talking about. The third leadership principle is really invest. Invest in myself and invest in my team. And that is extremely important because if I don't have people who are smarter than me in my team, then I'm already, you know, falling behind. So that investment in building capabilities, in building, you know, um, knowledge, in helping people reskill, uh, in growing beyond. See, we we bring only a part of ourselves, traditionally speaking, to the workspace. And I have also found that when you can bring your whole self, everything else that you are, everything that you do outside of work, also to your workplace in terms of lessons learned, in terms of, you know, um particular skills that you have which could be applied in the workspace it just brings a completely different dimension because you're playing to strengths which are potentially very unique to you you're bringing that's very holistic yeah you're bringing in a perspective 
with which you wouldn't have thought about that same business problem previously. So that's something else that I typically like to encourage. And I guess the final point for me is really in terms of, you know, looking at how do you make sure that you're creating, you know, a legacy, um, a legacy not of anything else but of people who can actually go out there and, you know, do absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, because the legacy as leaders, you know, is the next generation of leaders that we create. So have I created enough of a, of a talent pool in my journey to be able to say, there's somebody who is doing extremely well, incredible growth, uh, and sometimes uh, they have surprised me and even surpassed my expectations. And I think that is so heartening. I can't explain to you, but you know, that I think each one of us has maybe experienced that in our lives, but that is so heartening. That is so, it just, you know, gives you the confidence that you did something right in your journey yes. as a leader. I think that to me, that investment is, uh, is, is the biggest dividend that one gets, uh, you know, in their leadership journey. Thank you so much for that, Namrata. Everything that you mentioned, especially about ownership uh, and bringing your entire self to the workplace because that's when you're really bringing every value that you have is so important and it also makes, it it turns your job into something more than a job. It turns it into purpose. And I think that's very this. Uh, this is, I have another question which was not planned, but actually from both of your responses, uh, I would like to just pose it very quickly. Uh, just think of this scenario that you're, you're at the workplace and you see both men and women working. And as you said, women do have some self-doubts. They are struggling with imposter syndrome. So, couple to you, uh, what is one thought process or maybe one little thing, like a behavior thing or just a belief thing that you see women having today that maybe five years from now, 10 years from now, you want to say women having evolved past that? Any one blocking or a limiting belief, what would that be in your opinion? A limiting belief uh, around that I can, right? Rather that I can, I cannot, right? Yeah. So I think uh, continuously believing in that, um, continuously, uh, you know, and 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 you know, so we are also, uh, uh, um, you know, like we say, a more a, com a, a human being is a community animal, right? We need people around us. We need Absolutely. that validation. If you feel somebody's validation will help you go and talk, you know, we kind of tend to keep our doubts, our, uh, um, you know, disbeliefs within ourselves as well, right? Yes. Um, so go and talk, go and find that person who will build your confidence, right? Yes. And uh, so that you can actually work on that. Right? If you're not able to do it, and sometimes you you know you're not you kind of create created these boundaries around yourself, and you don't realize what your potential is, you need to find that person. Sometimes, Essentially, a good support system. Yeah. Correct, and uh, some and and you know somebody who sees more in you than you can. Right? Yes, yeah. and somebody who uh, and sometimes the journey of life, you know, that person may come in a professional environment, may come through a personal connect or um, friend connect we don't know where that will happen so which is where you know you just be open to meeting people connect you know we kind of again that there's just so much work there's so much housework we tend to yeah. kind of you know don't even take out time to go to a, let's say a small conference every year I kind of tell all my ladies how many conferences have you gone to it's about I do feel at those places where it um, you know, it's kind of you're in a non-judgmental environment where with your peers. So if you lack confidence, go there, meet people and you will also come back feeling, hey, I do know a lot of things about the area that I am working in, whether you're an HR, finance, IT, whatever, um, yes. you know, as a professional that you are so working slowly towards towards that. So that then you can say, hey, I can do this and whatever I don't know. I will figure it out. So being, and, and, and you know, um, like Namrita was also saying, when we run our house, when we run any kind of small setup as well, I always say house is a mini enterprise, right? You have absolutely, and you have all the kind of, you know, we talk about organization politics, you have joint family politics as well, right? You have family situations as well. You're already navigating a lot of those things which you don't even realize. When you're able to deal with so much around that, yes, the scale is a little different over here, but you will figure it out. 
when you you know you know you're through your child um, you know looking after your children you figure out which school is the best one you investigate you do the research and you're confident of a of a, of a decision you didn't know that when you know when you had you had your child the which school you figured it out right when they have to go to college you figured it out similarly you will be able to do that in the workspace as well right and when that yeah. in ownership comes again this exactly the same thing that amrita was saying when that ownership comes that i can do this and i have to do this and i have to figure it out you can do it and so hopefully somebody will always say i can rather than i can't yeah that's great so i can mindset as opposed to the i cannot mindset namrita what do you think as this scenario five years down the line a one limiting belief you just don't want to see women having i think uh, what i would like to see is women um you know having a voice believing in their limitless self yes. going boundaryless i think to me that is important because there are a lot of boundaries that we set for ourselves there are a lot of limits that we put on ourselves so that belief that i am boundaryless i am limitless i think is so important in the head uh and to have the voice because see it starts with thoughts so if i have the thought yeah uh you know then i speak those words and that is when the actions will follow so yes. if i don't have those thoughts of being boundaryless of being limitless uh i am not going to be able to speak those thoughts and to me then that is what i will act upon you know once i have started speaking i've started hearing and i have started you know uh absorbing that as the new normal for me uh so that's my view on what i'd like to see change i'm already seeing it change honestly speaking yeah. i think it's just so heartening to see so many young women you know stand up uh for what they believe in yes the point of view that they have I think when I joined, you know, the workforce twenty-five years back, there was still a lot of hesitation. There was a lot of limited exposure in some senses. There were a lot of things that, you know, you just accepted. Uh, you know, yeah. today I don't find that in a twenty-year, twenty-something-year-old, and I think that to yeah. me is the biggest change which has happened. But more of that needs to happen. because we lose some of that along the way like opal said you know we start compromising because of certain you know um certain priorities that we have yes. and we are okay with that but to me being the and person has always been important it's not about or it's not about family or career it's not about you know thing one or thing two it has to be an and in our yeah, life and to create that balance you know is so important but that balance has to be created in our minds uh you know first so first. that to me is uh is what i would like to see change thank you for that great point and frankly a very fitting conclusion to this interview that is women finding their voice that's something that lo- that we're looking forward to more and that's something that we've already seen that change uh, but it can only get better from here uh kopil and amrita thank you so much for being so candid uh speaking from the heart uh really no holds barred in terms of your advice uh if your experience is gained and the way you think that women in the industry can have real can experience real change and can thus then bring about real change and pave the path for you know other women uh this has truly been an enlightening conversation such a lot of great points such a lot of great tips uh that people can take away from and frankly everybody can learn from because i guess everyone should know it's a little bit different for women it's a little bit more challenging but that doesn't make us lesser, lesser than anyone thank you so much kopal thank you so much navrita thank you so much kirat thank you uh, i'd like to thank all of our viewers for watching thank you for tuning into this special episode of cio leadership live women in tech This is me Kirat Attar signing off until the next episode